So hello and welcome to the Soccer Hub Talks. Uh, today we are here with um, Ricardo Moreira from uh, Orlando uh, Soccer Club, Orlando City Soccer Club. Um, during this um, Soccer Hub talk, Talks, we will be discussing subjects such as the scouting process, where to look for players, how to become a scout, and the future challenges of this specific job. Before we start, I want to introduce uh, uh, Ricardo Moreira. Ricardo Moreira is um, graduated in law. Uh, is an MBA in sports management. In Brazil, he worked at Grêmio Osasco Audax in São Paulo. Then he traveled to the US where he started working uh, as a head of international relations and recruitment at Columbus Crew SC. Then in the same club, he became the head of player recruitment. Currently, he works at Orlando City Soccer Club, being responsible for the scouting department recruitment of players, overseeing the strategy of the football department, decision-making, working together with the head coach and the vice president of soccer. So, Ricardo, thank you very much for being here with us uh, today. Uh, it's a great pleasure to um, see you again because we met some years ago in Brazil, still in Brazil. So it's wonderful when we um, meet someone in an education course and then we find that um, well, he's making a living and making a career in soccer. So, Ricardo, thank you for being with us today. Ricardo, for me, it's a pleasure. Uh, and as you said, it's a, let's say it's a double pleasure because one of the, the courses that I took in the beginning of my career was uh, with you. And that helped me a lot uh, in, in setting the pathway to become what I am today, which is uh, of course, uh, a, a professional of sports, a mm. professional of soccer, a professional of football, which okay. is something that I that I like. Okay, Ricardo. So the first question is exactly about that. C could you explain a bit more of your history and why did you decide to work with soccer, considering that you took a degree in law, Ricardo? Yeah, no, of course. Uh, well, uh, well, I'm from Brazil, and I think as the majority of the Brazilian kids, I wanted to be a soccer, a, a football player uh, growing up. Um, I decided, uh, to be honest, I don't know for which particular reason to take a, a, a law degree mm -hmm. uh, back then when I was uh, uh, 17 to 18 years old. But the important thing is that uh, my first internship as a, a as a law student was in a, in a firm that dealt with uh, sports related issues, uh, sports uh, legal related issues. So um, during my legal career, let's say I was a sports lawyer, which of course opened uh, a field of opportunities in in this particularly in this particular sport in Brazil. And eventually, one of the clubs that I represented, one of my clients, uh, invited me to 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 work at the club. I was already interested in taking the. Um, um, so I decided not to take any second degree course in law. So I took a sports management, as you as you mentioned. And while I was doing that, I started uh, again. Uh, I left everything behind, uh, legal wise, and I started in an internship at Grêmio de Sasco Dax, which is a small club from São Paulo. Eventually, I became the sporting director of that club for two years. Uh, we had a very good run in a in a regional tournament in Brazil, which is called the Paulista which is, uh, let's say, a small tournament, uh, but very important one in the beginning of the season. We, we beat Palmeiras, Corinthians, Sao Paulo, big teams. We lost the final to Santos. And then we called the attention of people uh, around the football world that we were doing a great job. And, and uh, a lot of people came to, went to Brazil to visit our club and see what we were, we were doing, because we were recruiting players from uh, even smaller markets in Brazil because we didn't have money to invest and we eventually did good. One of the, per one of the people that uh, uh, went to Brazil to visit us was the current coach of the US national team, Greg Berhalter, mm -hmm. who was at that time the head coach of Columbus Crew. So he, he invited me to go to Columbus and that's why I started with, that's how I started with, with Columbus and that's how I started with MLS because they wanted to open their market in, the, in, in South America because if you compare Orlando, for example, in Columbus Crew, Orlando has a natural relationship with South America. Yeah. Uh, and Columbus needed to, to build that. So uh, I was able to, to, to help Columbus uh, opening that market. We, we brought five to six South American players to Columbus. For, during four seasons, we went 
to two uh, two finals, and we had a good run there. Okay, Ricardo, thank you. Well, um, you know, uh, most of our audience are um, um, people that want to get in into this industry as a scout, as an analyst, as a coach. Well, there are many uh, kind of jobs that could be done in soccer, but I would like you to to um, I'd like to to, to ask you. What were the main challenges that you faced to get into this industry? And, and you in particular, being a lawyer and then, uh, well, trying to, to change kind of uh, the, the field that where you worked, what were the main challenges and what were the, 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 the bigger difficulties that you faced getting into this industry, Ricardo? I think the, the biggest difficulty was uh, switching uh, from, from from a lawyer to a sports professional, and people have uh, uh, some people have a preconcept uh, uh, that uh, once a lawyer, always a lawyer; once an engineer, always an engineer; mm -hmm. once a, a marketing guy, always a marketing guy. So uh, you have to prove day by day that you are capable of doing what you are uh, uh, expected to do in 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 this field. Um, I think the biggest challenge is that is biggest challenges, and, and I think. Uh, it's a big challenge, but I don't think it's a uh, it's a it's a big Everest that you're climbing. I think in every in every in every profession in every field you have to to prove yourself and prove other people that you are capable of doing your job every day. Uh, in in sports, when you work with pressure, when you work with results, when you work uh, uh, almost on daily basis, you are being evaluated by uh, your peers, by your bosses, by by the audience, by the the public in general. That uh because of the nature of the sport i think that's a big challenge but uh i, I think one of the re one, one of the things that helped me uh helped me a lot uh winning let's say this challenge was uh i was in i was participating in many 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 courses many many mm -hmm. congress uh um studying a lot i was meeting a lot of people in in the industry in in this kind of courses this kind of congress so when I stepped in, in, in into the business, I was already someone that people could relate myself to something. Uh, yeah. I was not only someone taking an adventure. So I think that helped a lot. Yeah, uh, you know, um, I, I got many people asking me, how can I become a soccer coach? So I produced, I produced a, a small online start trying to explain my ideas about that subject. And um, one of the ideas that I give to, to people that want to get in into this industry is to find that specific niche, something a specialization, um, and 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 I, I'm aware when we met in Brazil, scouting and uh, analysis were, were was just starting in Brazil, in here in Europe, uh, yeah. well, it's it's it was already th something established, but in Brazil was 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 um, just starting up. So, do you think that? Um, uh, scouting is still a good niche to get into this industry, Ricardo. For sure, because uh, I think, uh, of course, there are, uh, there are specific uh, there are specifics in this area, but I think that's something that uh, people that are from outside the world of football, the world of soccer, uh, everybody, and, it, and it's not a something, it's not a judgment, but everybody think they know uh, what we are doing. Right, everybody thinks they, they can work in, in coaching, everybody thinks they can work in scouting and etc. And I think the scouting, uh, 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 and I'm comfortable in saying that is the easiest uh, um, door that you can open to work in a, so in a football club. Why, why do I say that? Because I think that people, uh, when, I, when I say that people think that they know uh, what we are doing, because a lot of people understand and know football and know soccer really well, even without working in the industry. So uh, when I interview a scout, when I bring a scout, sometimes the scouts, they are, they are very raw uh -huh. in terms of uh, doing a report, in terms of uh, uh, doing the, the, the specifics of the area, but they have an eye for talent. Uh, uh -huh. So that's the first thing. So the guy have an if, if someone has an eye for the talent and wants to be trained, wants to be coached in, in becoming a scout and become a better uh, professional, uh, that's a very good door. That's a very good pathway uh, to to become a scout, a head of recruitment, uh, a director, and etc. I think that's a uh, that's the way to do it. Okay, great. So uh, before we, uh, we we go to the specifics of scouting, 
uh, I'm aware that um, the way uh, uh, things work in the U.S. In, in the U.S. soccer is a bit different from the, the, the well the way that things work in Brazil and in Europe. C could you please highlight the, the most important differences between uh, the soccer in Brazil and the soccer in U.S.? Ricardo. In terms of scouting? In terms of scouting, yeah, I'm aware that you have kind of drafts. Uh, you have kind of, I'm not yeah. sure if, if you already have the salary cap or something. So, yeah. but, and the, the question of being a, a closed league as such as uh, the, the MLS. So I imagine that that affects the way that you work. How does it affect the way that you work, Ricardo? Yeah, that's a good question. It affects the way that we work. As, uh, I think in MLS is different from other countries uh, and, and similar to small countries in Europe, I would say. Uh, we have to be to be aware of almost every league around the world. Uh, our our network must be much bigger than a network of a club, let's say in Brazil, scouting. Uh, because uh, being a closed league, being a league that is... Uh, uh, have its limitations in terms of the cap, in terms of the budget. Uh, we, we, scouting is even more important here because uh, almost some, some, one thing that, that uh, most people don't know is that here you have only 30 players that you can have in your squad on your roster per season. Uh, and out of those 30 players, you have uh, some criteria and some differences between the salary that you must comply with. So uh, by saying that, I say that different for, let's say, a Flamengo, for example, we, we cannot take our chances and sign a player and gamble on a player that eventually will, will not work. Of course, that happens, uh, but our work must be uh, so so unique and so deep uh, because we cannot have 31, 32, 35 players. So if we, if, if we hire five players that they, they do not succeed, uh, we have to stick with them uh, uh, until the end of the season, we cannot replace. We don't have room to bring a new player to replace that player. So that's, uh, I think that's the main difference. The limitation that we have, the number of players in the roster and in, in the squad is something that we, we have to live with. And it's a big challenge because when bringing a player, you must be 100% sure or 99% sure and then that this player will give you what we need, what the club needs for that position. That's a big challenge. Is um, That is the reason why you are... Um recruiting uh, not uh, as much young players but already uh, um, uh, uh, players that you know that they are certain that they bring talent to your team such as Nani uh, uh, I'm aware that you hired Nani recently for the club uh, so do you yeah. believe that yeah. that the clubs in MLS they are not betting on the youth they are only uh, looking for higher players that already are established and that they are, that they are a certainty about it the difference there uh to be uh just as uh when we bring a, the the dp player the designated player as the as you mentioned Nani, as you see rooney as you see ibrahimovic for example mm -hmm. those are players that uh, of course they bring more on that only the the let's say the the response that you expect on the field they bring, they bring marketing, they bring an image, they bring leadership, they bring uh, a, a feeling that the club is, in the, is, is doing things right, and et cetera, uh, lots of stuff. But uh, as a comparison, for example, for, with the Brazilian league, uh, uh, the average uh, age of a player here in the US is lower than Brazil, for example. Okay. So uh, we have those designated players, uh, as Rune, Ibrahimovic, Nani, but the average of the players uh, are of younger players. For example, we brought Nani, but we brought, for example, Jackson Mendes, who is the uh, now the starter for 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 Ecuador national team. It's a kid that uh, was uh, being uh, calling the attention of everybody in South America, playing for Independiente del Valle in Ecuador. He's 21 years old. He's our starter now. Just to just to give you a comparison, so we bring the Nani's, but we bring also the the, the Mendes, the ones that can come to MLS, have a good run, and maybe. Uh, be so to Europe in the future. Okay, um, we have here a question from Philippe Tells. Philippe Tells lives in Canada, uh, I'm aware. Uh, and the, the question is, uh, when a European team wants to buy a player from a MLS, how does it work? How is the money pipeline, Ricardo? Can you explain how does it work, please? He contacts, 
Yeah, he contacted the club directly. Uh, of course, here in MLS, we have the uh, MLS as the, let's say, the, the, the owner of the league and every club is, uh, is partner with MLS. Uh, so MLS will receive eventually a share of okay. the of the amount the club is paid for the for the for the transfer of the player. But in terms of the negotiation, is it's similar to every other uh, negotiation on the world. The club will contact directly. As if Bayern Munich wants a player from Orlando, he will contact me, the vice president or the head coach, uh, and we will negotiate. We will eventually sell the player, talk to the agent, and and the money will come through the club. Well, the, money will, the money will come through MLS, but we'll come to the club and the club, the share okay. will stay with MLS. Yeah, you know, uh, here in Europe, um, people are talking about many years from now to creating a, a kind of a, a transfer house, um, the clearance house, they have that in, in England, but uh, it looks like um, in continental Europe, it's not being possible to do it, to make things more clear and everything yeah. else. And I think that uh, that process that MLS does and some uh, do the same thing, makes everything more clear you know and sometimes we need exactly. that in, in football and in soccer because sometimes things look a bit uh, confusing so Ricardo, 100%. yeah a bit about your work your day-to-day -day work what is your scouting process how do you analyze the players how do you recruit them and um how do you bring the players to your team can you yeah, try to explain step by step what you do in to, in this process ricardo one of the most important things that I think is participating on the daily uh, agenda of the club, uh, of the team. So participating, watching training uh, to understand uh, exactly the needs of the team. Of course, the needs come from what the coach, the coaching staff wants for the team. For for me uh, and for the scouts, it's really important for us to watch training and, and being somehow involved in that to understand precisely what the, what the coach wants, how he trains his players, uh, our players, and, and, and the specifics. Um, we have a team of scouts. I'm the director of scouting. Uh, we have three scouts uh, underneath, and in, 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 in they are responsible. Each of the scouts are responsible for different markets, different leagues. Uh, their main job is uh, primarily watch videos uh, uh, of the clubs, of the teams, watching lots and lots, lots, lots of games. Um, of course, focusing on the positions that we need. We have uh, different profiles of players uh, that we need to have a matrix that I call, I call it matrix. So it's like the, the documents that will guide uh, okay. the job of our scouts, which is the profile of every player and the specifics for every position. So while watching the leagues and while watching players from other leagues, those players will naturally pop up. And when they pop up, they'll be separated by the scouts and they'll be watch it and discuss it deeper with me uh actually if i like and if the uh, our scouting and recruitment team is 100 percent that this player can be good for us we will discount discuss this player with the coaching staff watching lots of videos in the platform such as y scout and instat um if the player has everything the attributes the profile that we need and the numbers make sense one of my jobs also is discussing with the club or discussing with the agent of the player uh the financials if it makes sense then we go live then we travel uh okay. we put our efforts there i will travel with the scouts to watch the player live to eventually meet the player to try to to look him in the eyes and 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 see if, if we are on the same page um so that's basically the process so it's 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 uh having the attributes the met the metrics of the attributes and the profiles that you want uh, meet the expectations of the coach uh watch videos 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 of the players in the specific regions that you are, that each scout uh, is responsible for, and then uh, after discussions, enough watching deeper display. If, if everybody's on, on board, that this guy can help us, then we go live and watch. Uh, I would say up to six, seven uh, live games of the player before, be, even before uh, making an offer. So, uh, and of course, out of the ten players that you are making offers, you get two, you get one. So, uh, uh, this. This this particular area of scouting is uh, can be frustrated because uh, uh, but shouldn't be because mm -hmm. uh, in in a range of one thousand players that you will watch you will sign one or two. Yeah. So uh, Ricardo, you, you talked about the the profile of the player. Um, we are aware that here in Europe and mostly in Portugal, the profile of the player that we want to bring, imagine from Brazil, 
it's very clear it has to be a very physical player um yeah res resilient uh, because we have a lot of uh, the, the game is very physical here what is the kind of uh, what is the profile of the player that the clubs uh, on the mls are looking for and where do they usually go to uh, observe those kind of players ricardo physical that is the main thing for us because the league here the paces the of the league here is high mm -hmm. uh, a league that is comparable to to the main leagues in europe but it's improving but physically it's a league where the pace is very high so we need pace we need speed that's uh, the main attribute that we need for for every position here even if you're looking for a center back to chase the the wingers the runners that uh, they're gonna face here in the league physically the physicality and the pace more specific is the is the is the main attribute that to, that we look for of course technically uh to play in small spaces to 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 be able to, to deal uh with this high pace is also really important the inter is, is becoming higher and higher and and to be honest we look to every market uh ricardo because i think uh even in leagues where notably the pace is not high you can find uh, yeah, uh sure. you, you can find places but what we do uh, is, uh, I think it's nice to, 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 to tell the guys is that uh, if we're looking for a player that is, uh, we like his physicality, we like his pace and speed in a league that is not notably with a very high pace, uh, we will try, of course, the translation for MLS is different to identify this translation, yeah. but we try to, 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 to watch, uh, specifically, we're watching a winger that's playing mm -hmm. a league, let's say, as Norway. Um, uh, and he's really speedy, he's really uh, passing by everybody. We will watch individually every player he's playing against to mm -hmm. see uh, individually wh wh in which level uh, uh, their their pace are to compare with his. Uh, so it's a, it's a difficult job. Sometimes the player will play in the national team, you'll have a, 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 another view, you'll talk to people, uh, and, and you have also data that you can, that you can if you can access data to see his level of runs uh, that also helps okay ricardo um ricardo uh, now it's kind of i have two questions to to finish our conversation the first one and um it's once again connected with with the, the job of a scout it's the question is how will this job evolve in the future do you think that um, in the in the specific case of the us that will be more and more uh, opportunities for these kind of professionals in the US, how do you think that this is going to evolve in the future? Do you think that is going to be data, 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 and uh, there will be no human eyes looking at the players, or do you think that is going to be more and more people needed to, the, to do this kind of job? Well, I think uh, as this league is growing, there will be plenty and of opportunities for scouting in, in the Major League shock, Soccer, 100% sure of that. Uh, because also, Ricardo, it's the value of the money. Uh, so, uh, as in England, as in uh, some other leagues in Europe, but the clubs here, have, they, they have owners. So, the owners, they, they, they want to be sure that the money is being well spent. So, yeah. uh, you're not just bringing a player. You're bringing a player because this, 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 and that. He's meeting the requirements. He's meeting what we need, and etc. cetera. Uh, so, I think there's going to be uh, lots of opportunities. And, and, and it will evolve for more and more and more data, more and more video specifics, yeah. technology technology and etc but I think the human eye will always be important uh, in, in this area uh, I would tell you that uh, when I when I'm when I'm when I'm developing a team of scouts for a club uh, I want to have different scouts I want to have those that that scout that will be uh, a very good guy in data I want to have that scout that will be very good in reports and in an organization and etc and I want to have that scout that is pure eye, that is pure talent. He he sees the guy and he doesn't exp he doesn't know how to explain properly, but he knows that this guy has the attributes that we need. So I think the eye will always be important in this area. Okay, hopefully that's a good news for everyone. I'm sure. Um, Ricardo, yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, uh, one more question here from Philippe Delch, and it's an interesting question: uh, Why in North America there is no solid solidarity payment? For the clubs that develop the players, um, you know here in, yeah, in that's Europe. Yeah, a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Looks. Lo looks no, like. Sorry. Eddie. Sorry, Carlos. Uh, sorry. Can you hear me, Ricardo? No. I'm, yeah. Yeah. No. I'm just saying that it's it's a good question, but it's uh, it, it's uh, 
re relationship between the MLS and the F and FIFA, uh, I wouldn't be able uh, or capable of explaining. <laughs> okay, just to finish, Ricardo, uh, what is the number one advice that you give to someone who is starting right now and wants to work as a scout? What is the one advice that you would give? One advice is watching uh, the game with different eyes. Uh, it's sometimes hard for us to forget our eyes as supporters, as fans, uh, mm -hmm. to become, to have the eyes of a scout. And what I mean by eyes of a scout, trying to try to see the game in a different picture. Uh, try to, even if you're watching TV, uh, uh, Porto against Benfica on Sunday, uh, try to understand the tactics, try to understand, maybe try to anticipate what the coach wants from the players and do some exercise at home. Try to... Oh, let's say I'm going to watch uh, 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 Tiquinho Suarez from Porto. Uh -huh. So watch Tiquinho Suarez for 90 minutes. What does he do? Uh, does he come uh, to check uh, to check the ball in the in, in the center mid with the number 10? Does he does run behind? How does he work? Uh, take notes of that. And, uh -huh. and, and for three, four, five games, you understand Tiquinho Suarez, for example. And next time you're watching a game as a fan or as a supporter, you know what Tiquinho Suarez will do. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good exercise that you can do at home. That's something that I did, uh, uh, watching games, taking notes, uh, that trains your eyes to be a scout. Uh, you know, um, I usually say this, um, I play the drums, uh, I had a band or some band. So, um, and that, at that time, when I, when I listened to a music, I only heard the, the drums because I was focused on the drums, you know. Because if you are not an expert in drums, you will hear the entire music. And sometimes exactly. you have to, uh, if you want to be professional in something, you have to be, uh, uh, um, you, you must have the capacity, the capacity to uh, leave all, everything aside and focus uh, on these specific things, the drums or the player. Uh, and, and that's a big effort. And it's a, a very good uh, tip for people that are watching to, uh, today. Uh, to our um, to our uh, conversation, I, I would like to add also that um, you would find many courses about uh, soccer scouting in Soccer Hub. Uh, courses with uh, Rui Oliveira, Nuno Felix, um, uh, Antonio Figueiredo. So you can find many courses of different levels and different uh, um, kind of uh, players to observe in the youth, in the professional. So. There are lot, lots of efforts related with scouting in our platform. I would like to thank Ricardo for your time. It was a pleasure seeing you again. I hope that everything you, goes, goes well in Orlando. Um, and I think it's good for, for everyone. It's good for, for the, the soccer in the US. It's good for all the foreigners that try to get into the market in the US. So Ricardo, thank you very much for your time and, uh, and see you soon, Ricardo. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you for your audience. Uh, it's, uh, it's a medium long term job that we think uh, mm -hmm. a challenge that we hope uh, we, we succeed in the end. I appreciate Thank you. I'm going to steal the very good example of drums that you gave <laughs> yeah. for the future. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ricardo. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you.